If you're going to change an area, you do three things. Number one, you focus on it and you get clear and compelling vision for what you want. If your body's not where you want it to be, I tell you there's one simple reason. It's not your focus. No, no, I focus on it. I focus all the time on how fat I am. No. You see, if you focus on crashing into the pole, trying not to, the more you try not to, what you focus on, that's where the energy goes, that's where you go, right? We all know that. But what people tend to do is, I'm saying focusing on what you want, not what you don't want. And not only just focusing on what you want, where you focus and say, well, I'd like to be strong, I'd like to be energetic, I'd like to be fit. It's focusing and making it compelling. You can't just focus on it. You've got to create a clear and compelling future in that area that will pull you towards it so you're not trying to push yourself. If there's an area you're not improving in, think of three pillars, if you would. Pillar one is get focused and clear. What's compelling? Where are you? Really? And don't lie? Where do you want to be? And make it so compelling you can't help it when you wake up in the morning you want to transform this area of your life. So the quality of your life already is better just because you are so excited about what you're after. When you do that with your body or your emotions or your finances or time or any other area and you start focusing and you're clear, you're going to have energy. You're going to have drive. You're going to start to do something. How do you make sure what you do really work is model someone who's already successful? All the tools I come up with, some I've obviously created, but the foundation came by standing on the you know, shoulders of other giants. You know, I went out and found somebody that's already got the result. Why reinvent the wheel? Success leaves clues. Find the best, figure out what they're doing. Do that. Alter it. Find your view of it. But start with what already is working rather than starting from scratch and trial and error. So emotion is in. If we get the right emotion, we can get ourselves to do anything. We can get through it. If you're creative enough, playful enough, fun enough, can you get through to anybody, yes or no? Yeah. If you don't have the money, but you're creative or determined enough, you find the way. So this is the ultimate resource, but this is not the story that people tell us, right? The story people tell us is a bunch of different stories. They tell us we don't have the resources, but ultimately, decision-shaped destiny, which is my focus here, if decisions shape destiny, what determines it is three decisions. What are you going to focus on? Right now, you have to decide what you're going to focus on. In this second, consciously or unconsciously, the minute you decide to focus on something, you've got to give it a meaning. And whatever that meaning is produces emotion. Is this the end or the beginning? Is God punishing me or rewarding me, or is this the roll of the dice? An emotion then creates what we're going to do, or the action. So think about your own life, the decisions that have shaped your destiny. And that sounds really heavy, but in the last five or 10 years, 15 years, haven't there been some decisions you've made that if you made a different decision, your life would be completely different? So the bottom line is maybe it was where to go to work and you met the love of your life there. Maybe it was a career decision. I know the Google geniuses I saw here. I mean, I understand that their decision was to sell their technology at first. What if they made that decision versus to build their own culture? How would the world be different? How would their lives be different? Their impact. The history of our world is these decisions. When a woman stands up and says, no, I won't go to the back of the bus, she didn't just affect her life. That decision shaped our culture or someone standing in front of a tank. Psychological strength. That's the difference in human beings that I've seen of the three million I've been around. Because that's about my lab. I've had three million people from 80 different countries that I've had a chance to interact with over the last 29 years. And after a while, patterns become obvious. You see that South America and Africa maybe connect in a certain way, right? Other people say, oh, that sounds ridiculous. It's simple. So what shapes you? Two invisible forces, very quickly. One, state. We all have had times. Have you had a time you did something and after you did it, you thought to yourself, I can't believe I said that. I can't believe I did that. It was so stupid. It wasn't your ability, it was your state. Your model of the world is what shapes you long-term. Your model of the world is the filter. That's what's shaping us. That's what makes people make decisions. When we want to influence somebody, we've got to know what already influences them. And it's made up of three parts, I believe. First, what's your target? What are you after? Which I believe it's not your desires. You can get your desires and goals. How many of you got a goal, a desire, and thought, is this all there is? How many been there? Say, aye. So it's needs we have. I believe there are six human needs. Second. Once you know what the target that's driving you is, and then you uncover it for the truth. You don't form it, you uncover it. Then you find out what's your map. What's the belief systems that are telling you how to get those needs? Some people think the way to get those needs is to destroy the world. Some people is to build something, create something, love someone. And then there's the fuel you pick. So very quickly, six needs. Let me tell you what they are. First one, certainty. Now these are not goals or desires. These are universal. Everyone needs certainty that they can avoid pain and at least be comfortable. Now how do you get it? Control everybody, develop a skill, give up. Smoke a cigarette? Well, we go for certainty differently. If we get total certainty, we get what? What do you feel if you're certain? You know what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, how it's going to happen. What would you feel? 
bored out of your mind. So God, in her infinite wisdom, gave us a second human need, which is uncertainty. We need variety. Third human need, critical, significance. We all need to feel important, special, unique. You can get it by making more money. You can do it by being more spiritual. You can do it by getting yourself in a situation where you put more tattoos and earrings in places humans don't want to know. Whatever it takes, the fastest way to do this if you have no background, no culture, no belief in resources or resourcefulness is violence. If I put a gun to your head and I live in the hood, instantly I'm significant. Zero to 10, how high? 10. How certain am I and you're gonna respond to me? 10. Here's what we really need. Connection and love, fourth need. We all want it. Most people settle for connection because love's too scary. Now these first four needs, every human finds a way to meet. Even if you lie to yourself, you need to have split personalities. But the last two needs, the first four needs are called the needs of the personality, is what I call them. The last two are the needs of the spirit. And this is where fulfillment comes. You won't get fulfillment from the first four. You'll figure a way, smoke, drink, do whatever, meet the first four. But the last two, number five, you must grow. We all know the answer here. If you don't grow, you what? If a relationship's not growing, if a business is not growing, if you're not growing, it doesn't matter how much money you have, how many friends you have, how many people love you, you feel like hell. And the reason we grow, I believe, is so we have something to give a value. Because the sixth need is to contribute beyond ourselves. Because we all know, corny as it sounds, the secret of living is giving. 